Hello and welcome to The Loudspeaker, your definitive guide on how to scale your startup. This first tip for every fintech startup is what are the media and press saying about us? How are we being perceived by these people? PR stunts are any activities that allow you to engage with the audience. I don't agree with the fact that our publicity is good publicity. Here is where we talk to communications professionals from all around the world to let you know what are the best practices and cool ideas that you can implement for your startups. Jeff and Adam, can you tell our listeners a little bit about your backgrounds and what Kingstar Media does and your roles there, please? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, my name is Adam Seaborn. So, Kingstar Media, we're based here in Canada and Toronto. And we're a full service media agency that's focused on performance media buying for our clients. Um, what that means is just taking their marketing and advertising goals and going out and buying paid ads, whether that's on digital channels like Facebook and Google or terrestrial offline channels like television and radio um, with a performance incentive behind it. Um, I work you know, mainly in business development and then on the terrestrial side of things, so television, radio, kind of traditional media uh, and Jeff on on kind of our digital platform. I'll let Jeff introduce himself as well, though. Yeah, definitely. So my name is Jeff Crane. I'm the director of digital media here at Kingstar. Um, as Adam mentioned, we focus purely on performance marketing. Every dollar we spend, we tie back to uh, a client's KPI. We look to generate revenue uh, at a target ROAS or uh, MER for them. Uh, we feel that if we can make the client profitable, they'll invest more media dollars uh, and we can both win. Uh, so our goal is kind of just scale uh, winning media strategies uh, across North America. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm super excited to get started because this month on the loudspeaker, we are looking at how the customer environment is changing. And I would like to ask you first, how has COVID impacted how marketers market to potential clients or customers? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, COVID-19 has absolutely, uh, I mean, affected the way that marketers think about advertising. I think the biggest shift was uh, in March of 2020 when, you know, the world kind of shut down. Um, there was a huge scramble to, to figure out, one, where attention was going to go, um, and two, how are we actually going to deliver our, our products or services to clients? So traditional retailers were closed, um, and e-commerce saw a huge uptick. People who had never... Um, purchased anything through e-com channels before we're purchasing for the first time, not out of want, but out of necessity. Um, I think the kind of saying that was going around that 10 years of innovation happened in the first 10 weeks of COVID-19. The impact for marketers was to reach those audiences in a way that they could transact. So um, a lot of, you know, bigger brands uh, essentially yanked their advertising spend. They didn't know what to do. A lot of their call to actions didn't really make sense anymore. Come visit us in store. Uh, or if you're a travel company, you know, you, you know, you, all your main calls to action don't really work anymore. What the opportunity was, was that a huge amount of kind of, you know, smaller players, incumbent, uh, or sorry, uh, challenger brands in the e-com space were able to capitalize on the opportunity and take a huge amount of market share away. Yeah, I think we've definitely seen uh, Jeff Bezos. He's definitely been, been <laughs> doing well in that sense. And uh... Yeah, I mean, you just need to look at the stock market and look at the brands that have um, you know, had a huge publicly traded companies, Shopify, e-com platform done incredibly well, Amazon incredibly well, but also Pinterest, Overstock.com, Wayfair, these are all people who uh, don't have the brick and mortar, um, you know, footprint, don't have that uh, exposure and are purely focused on reaching consumers through e-commerce. They've done really well. I mean, for marketers, uh, what does that mean? It means that there was a huge amount of growth in kind of direct response marketing um, in which you can easily transact with an advertisement um, and result in a sale or a subscription or, or an investment. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd love to know, um, how has Kingstar Media changed its strategy since the start of the pandemic? And have you witnessed the change in behavior with regards to your own clients? Yeah, so Kingstar Media has always been a performance marketing agency. Uh, old school term would be direct response uh, focused agency. And in that regard, uh, we were lucky kind of with the shift in media uh, and marketing during the pandemic. I mean, I always pride myself on Lux, the combination of preparation opportunity. We were always prepared uh, 
everything that we do, every media dollar we spend is tied to uh, an ROI. Uh, if a client has 10,000 and they need to generate a three uh, MER or ROAS, we create strategies uh, to execute and achieve that. Um, so I think that when the pandemic shifted and brands and advertisers' marketing dollars shrink, they really need to focus their money efficiently to drive revenue and scale to support their business. Uh, and I think that's where we fit extremely well um, because we were able to scale those clients at the target ROI. Our kind of strategy and our whole media uh, company is built around uh, scaling kind of direct consumer, direct response style brands uh, from creative to media execution. Um, and in terms of uh, in terms of their behavior, they're a lot more focused on KPIs uh, and target goals. So they need to kind of justify to their executive team and their board directors uh, every dollar that they spend. So they're tying it to whether it's a cost per lead, uh, lifts to a certain part of the website, increased viewership on blogs, or just direct sales. Uh, they're really now becoming more focused on kind of that reporting and uh, angle where they can generate a scale ROI that they can prove to their company uh, that it is being beneficial and, and helping them scale revenue. Yeah, I suppose that's one benefit of uh, being put under pressure. It makes you realize how you can work when uh, when you really have to be lean and very efficient. So it, it forces you to work smarter, I guess. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I really like that comment you made about luck. It uh, reminds me of a comment and um, um, a quote I think it's from an American footballer. I don't know who, but he says it's funny. The luck, the the more I train, the luckier I get. So it's it's something like that. That's one of my favorites. I like that. Yeah. If you're interested in seeing how Publicize can grow your startup, sign up for a free PR assessment on our website. And for a limited time only, exclusively for the loudspeaker listeners, you can receive an SEO assessment as part of your package for any tier of service at no extra charge with this special promotion. To find out more, visit publicize.co slash lspromo. Do you think the impact of these changes will last beyond COVID uh, when life goes back to normal, whenever that might be? Yeah, I mean, Sam, I'll jump in on that. I think absolutely. I think a lot of the changes that we've seen are are permanent. Um, if we look at, you know, e-commerce as a percentage of, uh, you know, total commerce in the United States, it was growing at a pretty steady rate from 2008, 2009, all the way through to the pandemic, kind of a few percent a year, got up to maybe 10, 15% of all commerce. It's now kind of in that 30% range. So it's jumped very dramatically, pretty much doubled. If you look at what happened in, in China back in 2003 during the initial SARS pandemic, um, they had that jump then and it stuck around. China has been years and years ahead of North America and uh, most of Europe in terms of e-commerce penetration. Um, and I think that now that we've hit this critical mass of e-com, uh, it's not going to change. So that's going to be a, you know, a second order effect that's not going to, to go back. Um, many retailers have essentially gone under or closed stores. They're not going to reopen those stores. Um, the United States and Canada had far too many square feet of retail per capita when compared to places like China. So I don't see that going back. I do think that um, some things will return somewhat to normal. But as Jeff was mentioning earlier, um, big brands looking at their advertising as just a line item expense to build brand versus big brands looking at their advertising expense as a revenue generator, i.e. I can go out and spend a million dollars to make $3 million or acquire new customers that are worth that to me. I think that mentality is um, always being part of direct to consumer brands and e-com brands, but not being a big part of a big brand strategy. And it's now going to become uh, very important for them. Awesome. I have to say, actually, there are certain things, I mean, just outside of marketing, which I hope stick. One thing that I have seen, is remote work before the pandemic i was lucky enough to be able to work completely uh, remotely and i remember seeing so many studies about the willingness of the workforce wanting to be able to work remotely but not having the the ability to and now it's been forced upon us it's kind of like what we were discussing before under certain pressures you need to adapt and now 
businesses have adapted to work remotely. So even though it has nothing necessarily to do with marketing on this topic, that's that's one aspect of life that I hope doesn't go back to normal so quickly. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. Like I think the, the trickle down for marketing and that we've seen is the clients that we have that are focused on the home have done really well because people are spending time at home. They're investing in their home, whether that means, um, you know, upgrades in the kitchen with appliances, whether that means cleaning, whether that means furniture, all that money that was being spent in offices has to go somewhere. And a lot of it has come into the home. What are the conveniences of working from home and how can I make that a better experience for myself or my employees? Um, I think, you know, in the aughts and in, in 2010s, we saw Twitter and Google and Facebook have these huge luxurious offices that were attracting young millennial talent in major cities. Now you're seeing a distribution of work. And we're going to see that um, working remote becomes at least part of the equation for a lot of brands. Um, and I, I think the trickle down for marketers is that you're marketing to people who are not having the same traditional commute times as they used to, or not in a communal office as they used to. They just have a different experience and are going to need different products and services to, to help serve their life. Yeah, I actually am reminded of something for which you mentioned there i think in the uk there's a very famous uh, sofa brand called dfs i think and apparently they had their best year ever last year because uh, people were just say so, uh, i suppose sick of the sofas they were sitting on <laughs> so so yeah i suppose that's an, a perfect example of how um customers needs have changed and therefore you've adapted to to focusing less on office stuff or or perhaps stuff they might use during a, a commute and just yeah at home yeah, and even uh, just in addition to, to Adam's point, I mean, health has also become a, a large focus. Obviously, people don't have the opportunity to uh, go to a gym, maybe go see nutritionists, et cetera. So they have to kind of create their uh, own at-home health initiatives. And that's where we've seen uh, from our marketers, those advertisers and brands that push that uh, kind of natural health remedies, making home, whether it's a juicer, or a bread maker, or a healthy air fryer, uh, those that kind of category has has shifted tremendously. Obviously, Peloton has seen uh, tremendous growth now and become uh, one of the world's top brands. So, uh, again, a shift in, in multiple areas. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, my last question to you: Do you have any final pieces of advice for marketing professionals who are trying to adapt to this new environment? Yeah, so I think, I mean, Adam and I have touched on it throughout the series of questions, but we just like to hammer it home again. It's just set KPIs that you can hold yourself accountable to uh, and then hold the brand accountable to. As a marketer, that will justify uh, your job and, and your business working with the client. If you can prove to them that the work that you're doing is generating uh, them a, a positive ROI. We work with a lot of brands and I mean, a lot of advertisers and marketers will be able to tell you a lot of brands think that they can do it in-house. They think that they have a team that can do what you can do and do it better. Uh, so if you can kind of establish those KPIs, prove them time and time again that you're hitting them, uh, then that's a way to kind of secure your uh, position in the game. Uh, and I think that, again, like you said, remote working as well, that pre presents a good opportunity for marketers to try to help scale up their business. I mean, there's a lot of kind of international, whether it's development work or design work, uh, that you can outsource at a low cost. Uh, to really drive up kind of revenue for your own business uh, and scale it internally. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, fellas. And if people want to keep up with you or reach out to Kingstar Media, how can they do that? Yeah, you can uh, visit our website. It's kingstarmedia.com. Uh, we are based here in Canada, but we work across the world. Um, you can look us up on, on LinkedIn. Jeff, we have our Instagram and our Twitter page going. Uh, or you can reach out to myself or Jeff directly. Uh, I'm just Adam Seaborn on LinkedIn and as well as on Twitter. And, um, you know, we look forward to hearing anybody who'd, who'd like to chat. But thanks a lot for having us on, Sam. This has been a fun chat. Awesome. Excellent. My pleasure. Thank you, Sam. Pleasure to meet you.